Honda Goldwing started life as a large, unfaired cruiser touring motorcycle and has grown in size, complexity and comfort ever since. Initially powered by a flat 4, liquid-cooled 4-stroke four engine of 999cc, producing 80 horsepower. It is now powered by a flat 6-cylinder engine of 1883cc, producing 125 horsepower. The new Goldwing can rightly lay claim to the title of the best touring bike on the planet. The first Goldwing was the GL1000, introduced in 1974. It was the first Japanese production motorcycle with a water-cooled four-stroke engine. Its original intended role was more of a large sports bike. But when Honda realized owners were doing big mileages, they re-evaluated the role as a long-distance bike. And in North America, that meant a motorcycle that would need comfort for the long haul, wind protection, a smooth ride, a comfortable seat, luggage storage, and power in abundance. Such a motorcycle would need to be maintenance light so shaft drive was adopted from the outset. From that day to this, the Honda Goldwing has got better and better at its job, not to mention larger, heavier, and more powerful. In 2018, Honda completely re-engineered the Goldwing. Two new models were introduced, the Goldwing Tour and the Goldwing. The Tour has panniers in a top box, while the Goldwing just has panniers for more of a bagger look. They are identical mechanically but the gold wing deletes the traction control, electronic suspension adjustment, heated seat, center stand and airbag option. Both models are available with Honda's DCT and features a reverse gear. Manual gearbox gold wings make do with an electrically assisted reverse. The standard gold wing has a more low-key, blacked-out look which, along with the lack of a top box, makes it look even sportier. The layout might be familiar but the flat six-cylinder engine is all new. 1883 cc and 24 valves enable a power output of 125 horsepower and 123.2 pound-feet of torque. Fuel injection is used and final drive through either the 6-speed manual or 7-speed DCT gearbox is by shaft drive, as it always has been. Honda has tuned the engine to have a broad spread of torque from very low revs all the way through the mid-range which is where most riders will spend the most time. This means that, should you opt for the manual transmission, you won't need to constantly change gears to accelerate past slower traffic. The Goldwing has a double wishbone front suspension setup, which is a brilliant compromise between soaking up road irregularities for a magic carpet ride and confidence-inspiring handling when the going gets twisty. The Goldwing Tour uses show electronic suspension, which adjusts damping on the fly. The standard Goldwing makes do with manually adjustable suspension front and back but it's no worse for it. The advantage of the double wishbone front suspension setup is that it reduces braking dive considerably. The design also reduces the amount of bump shock transferred to the rider through the handlebars. The Goldwing, in either form, is one of the most electronically sophisticated bikes you can buy and it is all easily configured via the 7-inch TFT dash which sits between the Speedo and TAC. Apple CarPlay is incorporated and so is Bluetooth connectivity. There is a navigation system built in which, in the past, has proved itself to be a bit of a lemon on many bikes as it can be out of date very soon. Honda has solved this problem by offering every Goldwing customer 10 years of free map upgrades so your maps will always be up to date. There's even something called Home Link System that can be programmed to open gates or garage doors so you don't have to fumble in a pocket for the remote. Naturally, the bike is equipped with a keyless system which means you can start the bike by simply pressing a button. With all that weight, the brakes need to be good and, unsurprisingly, they are. The twin front discs are 320mm and are gripped by six piston Nissan calipers, while the rear brake is a 316mm disc. Front and rear brakes are linked and work seamlessly in tandem with the ABS. Honda has worked hard to get the braking response just right. Unlike a sports bike, the brakes can't have too sharp an initial bite, but do have to be immensely powerful to bring the bike to a safe stop in the shortest distance possible. Large it may be, but the new Goldwing has been designed with the help of extensive wind tunnel development which makes it as stable as it is possible to make a motorcycle. Whether in side winds or facing huge oncoming semis and the wall of air they push in front of them. 
The fairing and screen also completely insulate the rider from wind, which is an important passive safety feature. The less stress on the rider, the less fatigue they will suffer and the greater the level of concentration that can be maintained. The screen is electronically adjustable and has been moved closer to the rider, which allows it to be smaller while doing the best job possible, and ducts in the fairing control the flow of air over and around the rider and passenger. While neither Goldwing model is what you might call light, they are a lot lighter than the outgoing models. Around 90 pounds of excess weight has been lost, largely thanks to the new aluminum frame and swing arm. Because the engine is much more fuel efficient, the tank is 1.1 gallons smaller but still gives the same range. Honda also played around with the weight distribution, moving more of it forwards which plays a large part in the improvement in the Goldwing's handling. While the overall layout of the Goldwing is superb, the ergonomics might not suit everybody. There's nothing wrong with the rider triangle and the seat is supremely comfortable. But that engine with huge cylinder banks sticking out each side, much like the BMW with its boxer engine, does mean that you can't move your feet and legs around as much as you would be able to with an upright cylinder engine. Nor can you fit accessory highway bags. After 48 years in production, the gold wing just keeps getting better like a fine wine. The 2023 wings are better in every conceivable parameter, comfort, performance, handling, braking, fuel efficiency, looks and luggage capacity. It might be heavier and more complicated than the first four generations of the model, but it is also measurably better in every way. Yes, the price has risen with every new generation. But, at between $25,300 for the standard Goldwing with DCT transmission and $32,800 for the Goldwing Tour with DCT and Rider Airbag, it represents very good value for money in this category, especially when you consider all its strengths. So, do you agree that the Honda Goldwing is the best touring bike in the world? If not, let me know why and which bike would you say is the best touring bike on the planet? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. If you like this video then smash that like button and if you'd like to catch more motorcycle news and content, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.